These are the officers who reclaim what is rightfully yours. We'll be knocking on the door and we will get the money. They have more authority than the bailiffs. I'm not going to be leaving here without the payment or goods. And possess more powers than the police. They're obstructing a High Court officer in the execution of his duty. They're called in as the last resort. High Court Enforcement Officer. To evict squatters. Hey, it's the last time you throw a punch at me, OK? Clear illegal campsites. Yeah, we've had instructions from the council. They want to move. And chase down debt. He got quite threatening. You've got minutes, not days. You get frightened, you can't do the job. People don't like other people getting away with debt. Using every tool at their disposal. Don't start threatening people with bottles. Calm down! And with the full backing of the law. Who will actually be on site tomorrow when we're carrying out the eviction? From this office in Essex, writs for debt recovery, repossessions and evictions are processed, risk assessed and distributed to operatives in the field. We've arranged for guys from the climbing team that will meet you there at 8 o'clock as well. They are known as High Court Enforcement Officers. All of their cases require careful planning. OK, they've taken off the tiles. And they are called in when all else has failed. I'm now to, to finish this job, to take back possession or to take goods or to collect payment. I'm, I'm there, they've had all their different chances. And when I leave, the job is finished. Scott Hines is the company's longest serving officer. If a job is particularly tough, then Scott is the man to call. His task today is the eviction of a council property in South London. Well, we've got a building here, it's single storey. It's all welded up, so the only access is the way the squatters are getting in, which is through a hole in the roof at the back. The vacant building is an easy target for squatters, and it's been an ongoing battle to keep them out. Bad in here today. They're entering an environment that is dark, dirty, and could well be dangerous. Watch for needles and everything, man. Yeah, they so stick together right now. The officers have no idea how many squatters there are, or how they will react when they're told to leave. Good morning. Got a bit of possession. You've been evicted this morning. The early morning raid catches the first occupants unaware. We realise you have to leave this morning, yes? Do you understand what I'm saying? But as officers move through the maze of rooms, they lose the element of surprise. Pack your bags and leave, please. But what you don't need, I don't need, is you shouting and starting raising your hands to people, OK? Let's get out of here, he's got a big knife there as well, yeah? Beside his bed, he's got a knife. Don't go back in there, please. We'll have sort of like um, people shouting, making threats, um, picking up lumps of wood, metal bars, uh, whatever they can find. And like, where a lot of these people are scared for their, their own safety, they'll have weapons beside their bed, like literally, maybe not to use against us, but against other people coming to rob them. So. As I say, he's got a knife beside his bed. So we'll leave him to calm down a little bit before we go back in now. Hopefully the knife will disappear. The discovery of a weapon means the enforcers have to be extra vigilant. How many have you got? Three? Two in there. Two, four now, yeah? Make sure no one goes through the roof for me. Yeah. Really, yeah? You've been evicted this morning, yeah? The rest of the eviction passes off smoothly. And in all, a total of nine squatters are removed. There's a door open down there where you can see the light. Are you working in here? Squatting in a vacant commercial property is not a criminal offence, so all the occupants are free to leave. Once the building is clear, Scott and his team can explore the full extent of the damage. Yeah, it stinks in here. It stinks. Repossessing illegally occupied buildings and the cost of clearing them up runs into millions of pounds a year. Yeah, but if you go and look in that toilet, then it's, um, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and when the property belongs to the council like this one, it's the taxpayer that foots the bill. Yeah, I haven't been in a lot worse than this for a long time. You get a different class of squatter. 
This is like the lower class, let's say, because they're prepared to live in absolute squalor. Scott does a last tour of the grounds and comes across one unwelcome guest who has slept through it all. Morning. Um, well, I call enforcement officers. Everyone's being evicted from inside here today. This little bit of the land as well, really, I'm afraid. OK? okay. So just wake yourself up when you're ready, if you can get going for me. Yeah. Thank you. It's taken less than 20 minutes to clear out the squatters. But there is no guarantee that this will be Scott's last visit. Well, it's the second time I've evicted this building. There's a chance that, like, literally they'll know it's empty and they will come back to look and see if there's any security preventing them from coming back again. The enforcer's legal authority is handed down by the High Court. Every year, over 70,000 writs are issued nationally. Their powers include the right to break into property and reclaim possessions. Uh, they haven't paid the rent on the shop, so obviously the landlord wants the shop back. They provide a lifeline for those who have tried everything to get back what is rightfully theirs. Hi. I'm Dave. Hi, Dave. So it's your fault we've got up this early. <laughs> oh, he's a smart one. He cleared the whole thing. Since when? When was the last time you, you were in here? Someday. Yeah? That messed about, was it? Cleared everything. Leonora and her elderly mother let out the shop in Leeds to a family friend. But then it all turned sour. It's been about a year of intense trying to get the rent back and forth. Since last June, um, we had, he owed over 4,500. Um, and then he was paying on and off in between that. And consistently he wasn't paying on time. Uh, so over a year it's been consistently bad. Leonora had hoped that the enforcers could seize the contents of the shop, which could be sold off to raise the money she's owed. But that hasn't worked out. She's come in on a weekend and warned him that if he doesn't pay the rent, the bailiff's going to come. But he's obviously just in the bunk before we've turned up to call his stock away. Yeah. So if you can just sign there, please, and then yeah. print your name there, that'll yeah. be cool. The good news is that Leonora now has her shot back, if not her faith in human nature. I feel like he's betrayed the whole family, you know, not just me, but my mom especially, who's 78, you know, someone who's that mature that you, you kind of were trying to get one over. She, he was always trying to get one over, and, you know, it's really disappointing to see that. Steve Mitchell is the company's most dogged debt collector, always determined to reclaim his client's money. In regards to an amount owing of 51,000, yes. Tracking down people with outstanding writs is, is a job in itself. Um, we travel all over the country. We use all the databases that we can use um, via the office and neighbouring inquiries. And effectively, at the end of the day, we do find them. Today, he's on his way to a second-hand car dealer in Salisbury to collect a balance on a debt of £9,000. If he doesn't get the cash, Steve is going to take all the vehicles. At least that was the plan. Huge build-up of post in there. That is cleared off. On his last visit, Steve could have seized all the dealer's vehicles for auction and settled the debt. All the cars that were previously here, there were up to 10 odd cars here. Instead, he gave him one last chance to pay. He's moved them all onto an, another site somewhere. But he's left that. If we take it, if it costs 100 something pounds to take it, plus auctioneer fees, if it goes for eight, 900 quid, might make 500 quid on it. That's about it. Should have taken them when I got here first time. Oh, hi, Scott. How are you? OK, so, so you've got it all in hand, Scott, yeah? It's estimated that today one person is declared insolvent or bankrupt every five minutes. And that means enforcement officers are busier than ever. In East London, Scott's first call of the day is on a shopkeeper who's run up a utility bill of over £6,000. They agreed to pay the balance by a certain date. 
Um, that date's passed. They have paid some, but they've not paid the full amount. So we're going in there today to collect the full amount. Obviously, you know why I'm here. You can either pay this now, or there's going to be a lorry here, and then you're going to get even more fees. How can I pay this amount in one go right now, man? Are you having okay. a laugh, man? You have to pay it today. You have to pay it now, or I'm going to remove your stock. Are you not taking the piss, man? Are you going to pay I'll or not? Pay. I will fucking pay it, yeah? Right, OK. I what I don't want you doing is locking the door, please. I was paying right, it, Right, listen. I was paying right. it. Right, now listen to me now, OK? You no, to no. Me as well, you don't bro. shout at me, don't and you don't pull the shutters down on me. Simple as that, because now you're falsely imprisoning me, and I will call the police, OK? Don't pull the shutters down on me. Simple as that. Don't pull them down on me. Don't pull the shutters down on me, so why please. Are you gonna take my okay? Shoot when because I'm you owe pay. money. Because Get the shutters up now, please, before I call the police. Call the fucking police. Get, they don't go down no further. Okay? Get the shutters up, please. Call the fucking police. Simple as that. Call the fucking police, I'll get a police and I'll get a lorry, okay? Your debt will get even bigger now. Daylight robbery. High Court Enforcement Officer Scott yeah. Hines has travelled to East London to recover a debt from a shopkeeper. Yeah, but it's the shopkeeper who is now holding Scott prisoner. Okay. Can I have the police here, please? I've been locked into the shop and the shutters have been pulled down. And the guy's getting a little bit aggressive and upset as well. You're fucking account right, number, Stop shouting bro. at me and stop swearing at me, OK? Wait, so I can understand he's upset and everything else, but I don't like being locked in a shop and I don't like it when it gets this aggressive. Right. The only yeah. person who has made this happen the way it is today is yourself by not paying when you was meant to have paid. My I've, officer phoned you I've a few paid. times. You I've haven't. Paid. You was told to I've pay paid. and you haven't. You understand? I've paid. Are you, are you going to get these funds? Are you going to pay this? I'm trying to fucking right. get the money. What right. the fuck is wrong right. with Right, so I'll give you five minutes to do that. But at the moment, I, I want you to get those shutters up, please. Sometimes you can be scared, but you can't show that. You have to make sure that you're always in control. Why don't you just pull the, the Why don't you just pull the shutters up what for me? The police have confirmed they're on their way, but the shopkeeper's behaviour is becoming increasingly unpredictable. I'm not taking your pennies because I'm not taking them. It's the same. That's money not money. money. I'm not standing here counting out pennies. Money, right, okay. Money, well, I'll tell you what I'll do then, yeah? Money is money, bro. I'll tell you what I'll do money then, is okay? Money, bro. I'll what tell you, you what do, I'll do. Bro? I'll start counting those pennies and I'll charge you £200 plus VAT what, for every hour while I'm here. You've fucking done it, you cunt. You've already fucking done it. Right. Look! Look! You've already done it, man! Don't fucking piss me off, motherfuckers. I will fucking fuck you the lot up. Ah! Bro, fucking wankers, man. Honestly, bro. What the fuck am I paying all of these? Rather than giving it to you, I will fucking put it up your ass on you, motherfucker. Don't start threatening people Try with it. bottles, OK? Calm down. Don't, Don't start me, pushing me, OK? I'll push you No, you bro. won't push me anymore. It's as simple me, as bro, that. Bro. Don't push me. Why are you fucking me? filming me, bro? Calm yourself why down. Are you fucking filming Calm me? yourself down and start... Why are you fucking filming Calm me? Calm yourself down. You Don't bro? push me you anymore, me, OK? Fucking wanker. With the situation threatening to turn really ugly, help arrives just in time. Hello? Hello? Is that the police, yeah? yeah. Hello, mate. I'm an high court enforcement officer. I'm trying to enforce a writ. He's pulled the shutters down inside. He won't open them. Do you want to open the shutters well, for me, please? Because the, the police want to speak to you. Your money out, you can't. All right, so I need to be sorted. All right, Th thanks for coming. All right. Um, All right. Why have you closed the shutters? Because they're going to try and take my fucking property. We've got here, the shutters are down. This man's right yeah, inside your shit. If, if someone listen walks into your house and says he's going to fucking listen take to your me. shit out of your house, listen to me. what are you going to do? Listen to me. Open listen. the fucking door so they can take it. You don't have to lock him in, listen, do you? You could be arrested right now, straight away from what I've seen. Mate. Fucking wankers, isn't it? Why don't you, who are you calling a wanker? Who, you t who do you think you're talking to now? Hey? OK, are you going to arrest me? Huh? Are you going to arrest me? I don't me? want to have to arrest are, you. Are you going to if arrest that's me? that's what's going to have to be, then that will have to be. If you get yourself arrested, Hello. you're not in a position to pay this debt, Hello. which Hello. means I'm going to have to take all your stock. Look, I make fucking 15p a fucking pack. 
Yeah? How the right, fuck right, am I going to pay right, it? Let's start getting a resolution to this. Yeah. You need to calm down. And we're not going to get anything resolved while you're standing there swearing, throwing insults. There's, listen, listen, where are you going? I'm trying to fucking pay the cunts. I'm what am I trying to okay, do? Okay, I'm trying to fucking pay the cunts. Faced with the prospect of having his stock taken, the shopkeeper starts to pull together the cash. So you've given me, I ain't taking it in that, get him to transfer it. Where you fucking take it from? You know what I mean? Money is money. Money is money, Baba. Yeah? Right, so you're giving me 1,000. This is an English saying, Baba. Money is money. You're giving me 1,000 and 10 pounds. Fucking shit. I'm not going to you. Look, one so you're getting yourself full upset, guys. 527 pounds. I don't Seven want the pennies. Pounds is fucking money. Money is money, lad. See how you're getting yourself all upset? Money! I think I've got a good job, you know, well, I enjoy my job. So, is it, not everybody could do my job. It's in their blood, look, it's in their blood. Cuntness, wankiness. You know what I mean? That's why he's doing this job, the cunt. Of course I do have to count it. Fucking wankers. I couldn't go and sit in an office each day and push, like, a keyboard and work in front of a computer. Two hours after being threatened, abused and then imprisoned, Scott leaves with the £4,000 required to settle the debt. I knew that he was going to pay once he had calmed down and once he had seen sense. He'd rather pay the outstanding balance than lose all his stock. Despite his ordeal, Scott decides not to press charges. Thanks a lot, OK. Thank you. For him, it's all in a day's work. Thank you. People call, not just me, people like me doing my job, loads and loads of different names, all nasty names, you know get called different names every single day, get threatened, everything else. But, you know, if, I, if it wasn't me doing this, it'd be somebody else. It's 5 a.m. in Maidstone, and Steve's up early chasing after more cars. He's hunting a vehicle belonging to a debtor who's fallen behind with their repayments. But like his trip to the car dealer in Salisbury, he's not having much luck. It's not here. Bollocks. We'll have a little pedal around. Because it's quite a large estate. She might have started parking somewhere else. Steve's been around long enough to know it's too early to give up. They'll try and hide the vehicle if they know that we're looking for it. Hold on. Finn has just pulled up in the vehicle. So we're going to shoot around the block and then we're going to go and block it in. All right, yep, it is here. Now he's located the vehicle, Steve calls in the tow truck and goes to inform the debtor. Hello, sir. I'm here from the High Court. I met you before previously. Today the vehicle was uplifted and it's going to be taken, unless you can arrange payment by close of business today. And I'm going to need the keys as well. Well, someone pulled up in it earlier this morning at 7 o'clock. It wasn't here at 5 to 7 and someone pulled up at 7 o'clock, so there are keys in the house. But it's up to you. If you want to come and collect the stuff now, otherwise you can arrange it later, later date. It's up to you. OK, then. No problem. Thank you. This is the end of the line today in regards to this vehicle. We've had two years of this debt outstanding. Just ignoring it, it's not going to go away. It will end up, we'll be knocking on the door and we will get the money. The very nature of their work means that the enforcers often have to deal with the most vulnerable members of society. And that makes their job even harder. Hello, madam. Hello. Oh, there you go. Hi, um, I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. Got a High Court writ of possession, which means you have to vacate the premises this morning for me, please. Yeah, but I have nowhere to go. That's, I'm not going to be rude to you, but I'm going to be honest, that's not my problem. Should we go in and talk about it, madam, rather than standing on your doorstep? Scott's in North London dealing with a tenant who hasn't been paying her rent. I was advised legally to stay here until I had the bailiff. Right, well then, not a bailiff, but a high court enforcement officer stood here now. 
And they must have advised you as well that when that happened, you had to leave. Plus the fact your landlord has told you what's happening as well. So we're going to go around and around in circles. We're going to get to the same end result, and that is pack your goods and leave, please. Private tenants who cannot afford their rent are often advised to wait for eviction. They receive a formal notice, and that means the council are legally required to rehouse them. I've got to leave, and I'm just scared because I have nowhere to go, and this is not what the council said what would happen. Thankfully, I have a recovery centre to go to, which is because I'm ill at the moment, so I can actually go to the NHS and ask for help. But I don't know where I'm going to go today. Um, I had a breakdown, um, which has meant that I have to be on medication most of the time. So it's all sort of falling apart because I have nothing left. I didn't think it would happen to me because I was so on top of things. If you take that as well, like that saying that I've been forced to rip today, so that might help you get somewhere else to stay. Okay. There isn't any point in beating around the bush and not telling these people how it is. You know, I'm there, I've got a court order to take back possession of this property. They're there and they shouldn't be because the court has ordered that. So it's not me saying that they shouldn't be there. A judge has made that decision. Christine's fate is sealed. She has just enough time to pack an overnight bag. What about your stuff in the bathroom, toothbrush and stuff? Have you managed to get that? The landlord agrees to look after Christine's possessions while she seeks emergency accommodation. As much as I can help them, I always do. But sometimes it just goes beyond that. At the end of the day, the mortgage company won't wait. They want their payments and we use the rent from here to pay them. These jobs aren't uncommon for Scott and he's developed his own way of coping. I just try to not, not even listen if I can help it because I would, I'd be going home and every night I'd be sitting indoors thinking I've just like literally made somebody homeless and you know, and you, you can't keep on worrying about what you're doing. Whether it's fair, whether I feel like what I'm doing is right or wrong, doesn't come into it. In his pursuit to recover debt, Steve drives over a thousand miles a week. His next job is in Folkestone, where the owner of an Italian restaurant owes nearly two and a half thousand pounds for an unpaid utility bill. They had a payment arrangement. No payments have been made. Only the office have been trying to call. There's been no contact whatsoever. The money has been outstanding for over two years. If the owner fails to pay, Steve is authorised to take goods from the kitchen to cover the debt. Hello, sir. Yes. Here to execute High Court writ. You can see this is a removal attendance. I can give you all the money now. I can give you half. Half? It's no point telling you I can. Yeah. Then I give you the check and it will bust. He's going to pay half of it, so I'm quite happy considering the stock is only wine. The restaurant's been struggling to make ends meet since the recession. People before they used to have a meal. After the meal, have a coffee, a brandy, a cigarette, uh, another bottle of wine and so on. So they're taking some good. Hi, good afternoon. Can you take a payment for me, please? Now they only come in, eat quickly, and they go. Uh, we're going to try for 1339. We've got customers that we used to see at least once a month. We see them once every six months, every year. You know, nobody kind of parties anymore because I can understand. They haven't got any money. In regards to the remaining, would you be able to clear that in four weeks, or is there any...? If you can, I would. Yeah, can I le if I leave you my number on the back... Thank you, call. If you give me a call, yeah. All right, then. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Times are hard. I do feel sorry for these small businesses. He's, he was more than reasonable and polite with me. He's made a payment. He's paid half of it, so well, I'll speak to him again in a month's time. I will pay it. That's for sure. But i got to eat. Today i got to eat. He's aware of what he can lose, which is all of his stock, which would have cost him more than what he's going to fetch at auction. It's a windy morning on the South Downs. 
High Court Enforcement Officer Scott Hines has arrived with a writ. There are an estimated 100,000 members of the travelling community in the UK. Across the country, local authorities provide them with special sites where they are legally entitled to stay. This isn't one of them. The enforcers are called in most weeks by Brighton Council to move this group on. Both sides know each other only too well. They understand that somebody's got to do this job, but a lot of them, they don't like us. Got high court rear possession. So you need to leave this afternoon, please. Anybody else in any other caravans? OK, thank you. You can treat them with as much respect as possibly you can, but they still see us as like the nasty person who's making them leave and they've got nowhere else to go. Morning. Go away. Sure, go away. Go no, away. don't go say go away and... Go like, to sleep. Fuck off, mate. No, don't mind. swear at me. I meant fuck off, mate. Right, just listen Look, to me, OK? Go away. Go just away. listen to me. Give, give me ten minutes, mate. Go away. Please. So much for being friendly today. For the travellers, the eviction order is all part of a pattern of persecution. This is a nightmare for everyone involved. We're not in anyone's way. There's no neighbours anywhere. We're living on a piece of disused land. Can't even see houses from around here. Well, it can't be great, like today, for instance, that they've got soaking wet. So I can sympathise a little bit. But then they were told a few days ago that they had to leave. And they knew this day was coming and they knew they, they had to leave today. I think they probably think we're just a bunch of dropouts, really. Are you? No. You don't live this lifestyle unless you choose to. Like, there's no way like, you do this out of anything apart from your own personal choice and your own personal beliefs. They know they're going to be evicted, and that's just part, part of what happens. Because they're opted out of society. It's not a lifestyle I would choose. People might not like what they see, but it's still our home. The travellers seem resigned to their fate and leave without a fuss. I totally understand everyone's point of view. You know, we're travellers, we live on wheels. But all this comes at a price. Every eviction costs the local taxpayers thousands of pounds, and the number has doubled over the past two years. It's not just travellers that keep the enforcers busy. Landlord evictions are also on the rise. We're at the um, eviction. OK then, Jenny, leave it with me. I'll call the locksmith now. Thank you. There are currently around 350 evictions a day, with the toughest cases being handled by High Court enforcement officers. Over in Margate, relations between a landlord and tenant have broken down. As a last resort, enforcer John Homewood has been called in with a repossession order. Are you going to wait just around the corner here? Because she won't open the door to you, will she? Uh, the tenant hasn't paid any rent for quite a while. She's obviously refused to get out by the date she's supposed to be out. And so we've had to take the final steps and actually evict her, unfortunately. What's going to happen today is you're going to get what you can leave with this morning. You'll come back and make an arrangement with Mr Tran, who's outside now, to get your stuff. But this morning, if you leave with what you can take out, OK, that's the way it happens, all right? So if you get your children ready, I'll give you time to do that. What's more upsetting is because he knows I'm five months pregnant yeah, sure. and the children have got to go to school. Yeah, that's fine. Time. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Get the boys to school and then we'll, we'll deal with it afterwards, all right? All right. This was annoying, you know, he knows. What we don't want to do today is to, to have a shouting match or anybody get into arguments, do you know what I mean? When we gave it to her, it was in nice condition. There was no rubbish and it was in a good state and she's unfortunately let it get into a bit of a state of disrepair and we've got quite a job on our hands to get it fixed up now. The tension between the landlord and the tenants is running high and John's caught in the middle. I could easily go out and knock his head off, but it ain't going to get me nowhere, so... There's no point. You swear to me he's not allowed to touch any of my stuff. 
Mm. I'm sure he's got no interest in doing that anyway. He, he, well, I, just he, don't, I don't trust him after, you know, knowing, you know, the time that we've got to leave. He will allow you to come back and move yourself out. If you sort the boys out, you, you get yourself <coughs> dressed and um, grab what you think you, you'll need this morning. It's been one thing after the other. Promise there'll be money coming, promising she'd fix the house, promising she'd clean the house. Promising she'd be out of the house on the time she said, and because she hasn't, she pushed us right to the limit, really, I'm afraid. Natalie says that losing her home is largely down to circumstances beyond her control. I owe him rent because the council wasn't actually paying the rent, so which then put us into rent arrears. That's what's led to this. The benefit system is absolutely diabolical. They don't give you pre-warning of when they're going to stop your benefits or... They just do it and, you know, you're left to face the consequences. But obviously, you know, it's basically my fault, I suppose. You know, I've just got to try and keep calm because, obviously, of the unborn child. To put somebody pregnant on the street, I wouldn't do that in the worst enemy. Just going to put their necessities in the car, take them over to mine, and then I'm going to take... Uh, Ross and Natalie down to the council, sort out down there, um, and see what happens. And if necessary, they'll have to stay with me for a couple of days until the council sorts something out or somebody sorts something out. Difficult situation. Uh, the lady was pregnant. She was just upset that uh, we were there before the kids went to school, which is understandable. But um, as much as I empathise uh, with those people, um, we're here for a reason, and uh, they're going straight down to the council, and the council will look after them. Steve's next job isn't as tricky. He's heading off to Oxford to chase up another substantial company debt. He's after the owner of a perfume business, who refuses to pay one of his suppliers. In regards to a writ that was issued against the company, yeah. just here to collect the remaining balance, which is £1,070 and 2p. Do you want to do the payment here now? No. You don't? No, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you when I'm ready. But it doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. Well, it so. does. Well, I'm afraid it doesn't. I'm not going to be leaving here without the payment or goods. So. Can you forcibly break it? Yes, I can. Can you? Yes, I do have the power to do that, yeah. It really is. It's so medieval. Don't want to go down that line, sir, but it's up to you. With the man being so defiant, Steve's not sure if he's going to get the money. OK, sir. Oh, I dropped it. When you finish with it, stick it through the door. Yes, sir. I'll leave your receipt as well. The debt may have been settled, but the man isn't quite finished. What I'm so angry about is that you come here and embarrass me and fuck me up. How have I embarrassed you? Oh, don't be so fucking you stupid. Fuck off. Mind your door. Nice gentleman. It's pure arrogance that he believes he's above the law and he doesn't have to pay. And by looking down and speaking to me in the manner he does, he's still portraying this arrogance that he's um, better than everyone else and why should he have to pay the debt? That is now resolved. Move on to the next one. Back on the South Downs, the travellers have moved on. They're now camped illegally in the car park of a local sports club. At the moment down there, there is about 15 caravans with all their vehicles and other materials they have, dog kennels, uh, solar dishes down there. I've got no objections to the way they want to live, but to show no respect to the way that we want to live, I don't think it's right. They have no consideration for anyone else apart from themselves. If I broke into a secure car park, I would be kicked out straight away. I do get very frustrated, and I do get very angry that nothing's done immediately to get rid of them. The sports centre make a complaint about the travellers illegally occupying the car park. So once again, the enforcers are called in. This time, it's Steve and John's turn. Every fortnight, without fail, move them from one site to another. Moved them last week, moved them again. <laughs> How you been, all right? 
You know today's the day. Yeah, today's the day. Uh, we'll 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 sort it out. It'll get sorted out somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't. Oh, it's bitching a bit. I oh, wouldn't be best pleased if that was me to wake up and have 20 caravans and the noise that goes with it in the evening. The last thing we want to do is live somewhere um, right in everyone's way and causing, you know, an eyesore. We quite often find sites that are well out of the way but get evicted just the same, so we end up places like this. This is the playing field. Kids come here to play football. It's covered in dog feces all around here. All the rubbish that's all been dumped here, that's going to have to be cleaned up. The travellers pack up and prepare to leave. For Steve, this is one job at least that looks like everything's going according to plan. Hello Scott, it's Jackie from the office. Um, just thought I'd give you an update on that eviction. We've got a derelict pub where there's been one guy who's refusing to leave. Scott's on his way to one of those jobs that every enforcer dreads. One that he's been told could have a potential for violence. He's armed himself with weapons, a piece of wood and maybe a knife as well. The man has been squatting in a pub for nearly two months. He has several convictions for drug offences. Scott and John are waiting for police to provide backup while they carry out the eviction. Getting in the building might not be that easy. He has barricaded it like he is claimed, claimed to have done. So it might be a slow process of getting through barricades. Um, it could go completely differently. It could be literally he's there waiting for us and he just literally walks out and he um, hasn't got any problem at all and he's polite and friendly and all this is for nothing. Um, We'll find out in a few minutes. Hello, David. Hello there. High Court Enforcement Officer. I've got a High Court writ of possession. Gives me the power to come in through the door and to ask you to leave. Do not come in here. Please! Oh, I'm telling you now! Please do not come in here! This is illegal, mate, okay? Go We're not going to do this. Go. You can keep coming for ages, and then when you come here, I tell you, I ain't going to stop. The front door offers little resistance, but there is no telling what lies on the other side. High Court enforcement officers are breaking into a pub to evict a man who's been living there illegally for two months. The pub has been blocked at every turn, and it's clear the man has no intention of coming quietly. Fuck off! Through this one now. David, we're coming up. David. Taser armed officers follow the enforcers in. They're on standby to take over if necessary. David, we want to be able to do this in a calm, calm, organised way, David. 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 Talk away, mate, right. but you ain't taking me out that door, buddy. Do you understand? David, I need to ask you cooperation. No! Cooperation. You're gonna fucking kill me, dude! I'm not gonna kill you. Yes, yeah, will <coughs> fucking kill me. My heart's already racing 200 feet. Please, please! Have a weapon! No! Weapon! No! We're going! 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 We can stop all this, put that down, and then we can help you. Uh, put the weapon down! Fuck off! Put the Fuck weapon off. down! Fuck off! Take it down! Get out! Oh, oh, oh. oh, don't move! Put it down! Oh. Get out on the floor! Oh. 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 Chill out! 
Okay. Uh, right, I'm just going to release these, all right? All right, just come on, sit down. You're safe. Just keep breathing, right? Okay, you're going to be looked after. Well, what, what about fucking all my clothes? For fuck's sake, how am I going to get back in the building? Let's see you right Now that David is under arrest, Scott is able to reclaim the property for the rightful owner. I don't give a shit if you fucking drop me, fucker! Drop me down the stairs, fucker! Go on! Very, very rare. It's the first time I've seen it in nearly 12 years of doing this. Hey, is this the medical help, buddy? Is this going to hospital, is it? Hey? Is this going to cure me, is it, mate? Hey? Some people might think that this is hard and it's like quite an awkward and nasty job to do, but you know, I've done it for quite a long time now, and to me, it's no different to going to work each day and stacking shelves or driving a taxi. It's just a job, job to me, you know, and there's a lot more dangerous and a lot more stressful jobs out there than what this is. Who's got the van, mate? Back at the Travellers' eviction, Steve has hit a problem. Not all of the owners of the caravans are on site. Steve knows that if he attempts to move the homes without permission, there will be an almighty row. He phones the council for instructions. Got a couple of vans. Um, there's no one here for them. His orders are clear. Everything has to be shifted by noon. So we'll take those, take those to the pound, yeah? Yeah, this one here. And oh, that brown one here. There's no one here to claim ownership of them. They'll be given a week to claim ownership. If not, they'll be scrapped. There's no goods inside it which are of any value to us. To them, maybe of sentimental value. There's only more we can do. We've had instructions from the council. They're the client. They want to move. The site's got to be cleared. With the weather against him, Steve's chances of meeting the deadline look increasingly remote. The wheel's fucked. I'll leave it there, I'll take the truck. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey! Hold on, what? To make matters worse, one of the travellers turns up to find his caravan being towed away. If you'd ask me, I'd have told We didn't ask you man. because you keep gobbing off at everyone. Yeah, because you're fucking taking the piss. How can anybody talk to him like that? You're just as much of a problem as the council are, as long as you carry on right. doing everything that your bum-licking lackeys tell you to. Listen to Because us. it's illegal. You know it's no, illegal. No. You know that this is no. the last fascist state. This is the last bit of racism that's illegal in this listen. country. Why should I fucking listen to you? Listen. Why the hell should I? I've been listening to you people Calm forever and ever and ever. Down. For 30 years, my people have been chased around and harassed by people in day glow. Calm yourself down. Piss off. Calm yourself down. No, calm yourself Piss down. off off calm my side. You while you're so, your yeah, side. I'm not asking you to talk to me. Well, I'm haranguing you, you stupid prick. I won't prick. talk to you. If you won't get that bit, yeah? Because this is fascism. Because you people are doing this job. You shouldn't be able to bloody sleep at night. You've got family. You imagine seeing them all being Steve. made homeless, yeah? Oh, I, I've been doing this for 30 years. Oh. I get moved on to a new site every seven days. You tell me how many sites there are in the fucking we're, UK. We're are you going to be moving this? Otherwise, we'll be hooking it up. Uh-huh. Simple as that. I'm asking you a civil question in a civil tone. Yeah, and I are don't you have to answer. You've just made not my point. I've asked you. I've asked you. People are mistake. you moving it or not? Are you moving it or not? Simple question. Not a problem. When the truck comes, we'll when remove it ourselves. It, it's about brute force. force. And you know it's because no. you're bullies. It's not bullies. It's because you're bullies. You won't let this remain here. You will bully it out of it. Steve and John, the abuse is all in a day's work. You never used to think you were born to be a mug in a month. Foul language is part of it. It's a lot of hot air. People are upset. The heat of the moment, they generally say things that they, they didn't actually mean. Um, and it's water for ducks back, really. Despite all the shouting, the outcome is always the same. We're going to be seeing you next week, probably the week after and the week after that. So it's pointless falling out, isn't it? All the best. Cheers. All right. Taxpayers paying week in, week out, throughout the country, for enforcement officers to move travellers on. And uh, there's never going to be a solution for it. No one wants them on their land. 
all we can actually do is turn up when we requested and move them onto another site. It's taken six long hours to clear the car park. But for the enforcers, there's always another job waiting. We're keeping on top of it. That's all we can actually do. Betsy, I'm here today to collect the payment in form or seize the vehicle. With domestic evictions and debts, we're collecting money for individuals. We're not stopping the amount of debt that's being built up throughout the country. At nine o'clock, you're going out the premises, so... No, no, I've got a writ here to seize goods and remove goods. The debt's obviously escalated. But it's never going to stop. Um, debt's always going to be there. And that's effectively what our job is. Try and keep a lid on it as best we possibly can. Got a high court writ of possession. Wow. No, don't shut the door, mate. 